Hey, you nerd master! Ah, greetings, you little pipsqueak. What's your name? I'm Gary, one of your patrons. Hurry along now, I haven't got all day. How can I help you? I was wondering if... if there's any chance you could possibly review OIDS for me on the Atari ST. OIDS! Yes, I've heard of this game. I'll tell you what, off you trot, and I'll see what I can do. Thanks a lot, Nerdmaster. You're the best! Yes, 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 off you go now. There was a period when the humble Atari ST was my world. I say humble because by the early to mid 90s it was definitely starting to feel that way, with Amiga owners gloating at their wider game choice from up high. But despite this, the ST had its own exclusives. OIDS was one of them. Released early in the ST's life, back in 1987, this was a game both developed and published by Faster Than Light Games, better known for producing the Supreme Dungeon Master also on the ST. The creation of OIDS was handled from start to finish by Dan Hewitt, who also helped program Dungeon Master 2. Now, I might have said exclusive earlier, but a conversion of OIDS for the Apple Macintosh was also released, although that's even scarcer than the ST iteration. So what's important here is that there was no Amiga version, well, until 2014 at least, when the ST version was reverse engineered by Maynaf and ported across. But if you were both an ST and OIDS owner back in the day, then you at least had something to gloat about, with it receiving impressive reviews at the time. So let's see what all this is about. Well, here's the box. This one is a bit beaten up, but due to its rarity, you'll be pushed to find one in better condition for any kind of reasonable price. On the front we have what appears to be a silver droid being chased by a flying saucer, or being witnessed by a robotic cat. It's got that shiny Flight of the Navigator feel to it, but it doesn't really reflect, if you'll excuse the pun, on the gameplay you find within. The back paints a truer tale, with a screenshot, or at least a composite representation of a screenshot, along with descriptive text. Rescue the Oids from the fiendish Biocretes, who are turning them into vending machines and household appliances. Fuel your ship, charge your shields, and blast off to adventure as you challenge planetoid after planetoid of devious gravity traps, treacherous teleport puzzles, and wave after wave of hell jets, heat seekers, and burst orbs. Well, it certainly sounds compelling. If we open up the box, we have a compartment containing both the German and English manuals, and also a compartment containing the 3.5 inch double density floppy disk. Let's boot her up. So, after listening to the soothing sounds of the ST floppy drive, we're presented with the FTL logo, followed by a request to make the disc writable, somewhat filling me with anxiety, but it's just for the game to save maps to disc if required. We then have the OIDS title screen, with a bouncing eye dot and some rudimentary reflection effects. Nice enough? From there we have the menu screen offering us the option to change our keyboard configuration, which is unnecessary due to the exceptional placement of the default controls. We can also edit our own galaxies, which I'll come back to, or simply pick from the list of predefined sectors to explore. I'll ease us in with no voids. Now, the first time player may be deceived into thinking this is a first person cockpit perspective game, but no, this is just the incredibly fast leap sequence to our next moon like planetoid. After receiving Moon to the Face, we're then lowered onto the planet's landscape and must begin the quest of destroying everything that looks vaguely blastable. Even the trees. Won't someone think about the trees? It's immediately apparent that this game borrows from the likes of Asteroids, Gravitar, Thrust, 
Defender, and even arcade elements from games like Choplifter. Using either keyboard or joystick control, we can thrust our little ship using its single rocket, with the aim of destroying each of the BioCrete's installations until we find some packed full of little oids. If you land on a flat nearby surface, the oids will then run to the relative safety of your ship and we can move on to the next target, although they are quite daft and will sometimes peg it across the landscape. Obviously landing is a perilous activity, so coming in a little too fast or being at the wrong angle will render your ship and any stowed oids obliterated. You can also kill oids through excessive force, which isn't ideal but won't actually lead to a failed mission, just fewer points. Incidentally, we're actually not playing as an oid saving our fellow race, we are a separate compassionate race, part of the Save Oids organisation, committed to saving these android slaves, who were actually created by the Biocretes in the first place. So really, we've just waded into a whole stack of business that's nothing to do with us to completely screw shit up. I mean, this would really be at odds with the Prime Directive, assuming these guys haven't got warp flight. The results are invariably disastrous. It's hard to be philosophical when faced with suffering. Who even knows if these oids are sentient? It's, it doesn't make sense. Once everything is destroyed and all the oids safe, you can then dock with your mothership and the level is complete. Now, the first levels may be a breeze, but as you progress, the Biocrete's arsenal increases, and soon enough we have those heat-seeking missiles upon us, among other perilous exploding devices. Thankfully, our V-Wing ship has a protective shield which can be deployed using either the left shift key or pulling down on the joystick. This shield protects us from any attacks, but it doesn't last forever, and so must either be used sparingly or recharged often with the spacebar. A recharge cycle takes a number of seconds, uses fuel and must be restarted if you need to use your shield at any point before it's complete. Talking of fuel, we have a limited supply, so nicking some from the BioCrete fueling stations is essential in later levels. And really, this is how play continues. Levels become increasingly difficult with attacking ships, repelling orbs, and all manner of feisty critters. For the bigger enemies, we can crack out the Nova Bombs using the full stop key, which inflicts substantial damage on enemy installations. If all of this wasn't enough, each level also presents an increasingly devious landscape, requiring precise ship navigation, all of which adds to both the addictiveness and frustration of proceedings. Anyone who has played Gravity Force on the Amiga will know just how addictive this formula is. There's something about just being on the edge of control that's thrilling. It's the same as people who go drifting, riding that fine balance of control versus complete failure, and getting it just right most of the time. I think if we get philosophical enough, it's the same as living life. It's always at its best when you don't quite have full control, but just enough to get by. For me, that's why these games work, and it's why they're just so damn addictive. One gripe I do have, especially compared to modern games, is the limited directional placement. Whereas modern analog sticks give us smooth 360 degree motion, each left or right turn in oids moves us a set number of degrees and means it can be hard to target specific points. Still, at the time, this was all part of the strategy, and as long as you suppress that need for precision, it remains a marvellous, engrossing and addictive experience. So what happens when you've hammered through the numerous worlds, such as Caverite or Vasteroid? Well, you can turn to the built-in level editor. What a stroke of flipping genius. Now, this level editor allows you to both create and save galaxies, which you can then share with fellow Oids owners if you knew any at the time, or just add to your own roster. So let's dive in. Everything is pretty straightforward. The control key selects different objects, insert places it, and delete removes it. There are all sorts of other commands as well, but that's all you really need to know to get started. 
A bit of clapping and slapping and there we have it, my own little level. I could have spent years on this in the 80s, in fact I'd probably still be doing it today. But that's always a thoroughly enjoyable experience and enough reason to go and buy an Atari ST even today. Of course you could always emulate the little bugger but then you wouldn't get the clackety Atari ST keyboard sounds and purring floppy drive to warm your soul and fester your spirit. Trivia time! The name Oids is actually a play on the word androids, and also you may notice a distinct similarity between your V-Wing ship and the ship from Asteroids. Mm. Mike Daly from DMA Design actually gained inspiration from the tiny Oids characters for the game Walker, which then went on to inspire the little characters known as Lemmings. Heh, <laughs> fancy that. Inspiration, it's the gift of life. Well, the gift that keeps giving, I guess. And there we have it. That's Oids. Thanks for watching. Maybe watch something else. Stay tuned, subscribe, even contribute to my Patreon if you want to help my channel grow. In any case, thank you for watching and have a great evening.